if I can find it now. Jeremiah chapter 18 this morning. Y'all pray for me this morning. It's going to be an interesting message. Um, not interesting for you to listen to, but interesting for me to try to preach. Um, the topic this morning is stay on the wheel. Um, my aunt years ago used to be involved in pottery, clay making. Um, I started doing an object lesson in here this morning, but I didn't figure a way to morning to clean up. And I was going to take a big handful of clay, and I was going to slam it down on the podium and see what happened. And then I was going to take a clay pot, and I was going to slam it down on the podium and see what happened. Anybody got any idea of what would happen to the clay? It would be smooshed. It'd just be smooshed. It wouldn't really be anything any damage. Now, what about the clay pot? What would happen to that? It would shatter. What is the difference between the two, the clay or the clay pot? One's been burned. It's called a kiln. <coughs> one's hard. One's still pliable. In Job chapter 23 and verse number 16, the Bible says that the Lord hath made me soft. Job's friends, Job's family, Job's circumstances, Job's situations. They gave him all kinds of reasons for it happening. But Job's response to it was, the Lord has made me soft. My topic this morning is stay on the wheel. My aunt, as I said, used to make pottery. And the old school pottery wheels, they had two wheels. They had one big one up at the top with a nipple in the middle. And they had another wheel that was connected to a shaft up underneath. And they slid up under the table with their feet on the smaller wheel. And they would get that one turning. And that would in turn turn the bigger one up on the top. And the clay would be molded and shaped. And, and, and if you notice here in chapter 18 it says, The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. And I went down to the potter's house. And behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again a usable vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. And, and I noticed, and there's all, been all kinds of sermons and songs preached about he didn't throw the clay away and, and marred in the hands of the potter and and all of that kind of stuff. But in the middle of that wheel, there's a little dimple or a little nipple or whatever you want to call it. And in the very center of that wheel was the place of no gravitational pull. If the clay got on the outside of that wheel in any area, as the spinning wheel would take place, much like the merry-go-rounds down at the park, eventually you're going to fly off. And the clay would fly off side unless it stayed right dead center in the middle of that wheel. And it's like our lives, the gravitational pull of the world and circumstances and situations that are pulling at us unless we're right in the middle of God's will, not will. But, but so God is the potter and God's shaping us and molding us. So the key to my successful life, just like a successful pot, as long as that clay was in the middle of that wheel, it was pliable. It was moldable. It was makeable. And yes, it was marred in the hand of the potter. It was. It had a. It had a. Had a. Had a. Had a. It had something that was wrong with it. It had something that that didn't look right. It had a crack or a seam or or something. There's a word that I'm trying to find, but I can't think of it right now. Uh, but it had something. A defect. That's the word I was looking for. It had a defect in the middle of it, but. The master potter just reshaped it and reformed it and got rid of that problem that was in it and shaped it again into a usable vessel, the Bible said. Now, look over one more chapter in chapter 19. This very same clay that was marred in the hand of the potter was on the wheel, was, was being shaped and molded and everything, and then what happened was the clay got hard. And you've never heard a sermon on chapter 19, verse number 11. And shout they say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people 
as one breaketh the potter's vessel. The only difference in you staying on the wheel and being broken off the wheel is off the wheel the clay gets hard. When you're in the middle of God's will, as Job said, the Lord maketh me soft. We're pliable, we're usable, we're moldable, we're makeable, we're, 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 we can be made, we can be marred over and 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 over again. But as long as we stay in the middle of the wheel, God can make us over again. God can, can take His hands and He can shape us and He can mold us and He can make us. So the key for me in a successful Christian life is to stay on the wheel. Now some of the things that can knock us off the wheel... All of you are familiar with Job, right? The Bible said he hated evil. He was a righteous man. He was a rich man. He had everything going for him. And Satan said, the only reason he loves you is because you've been good to him. Well, what Job said was, all of this stuff that's happened in my life is so God can mold me and make me. God is making me soft. Now, several of the things, i got five things for you this morning um, that can, can knock us off the wheel. One of them is our family. You've never heard about Miss Job going to the sacrifice session with Job. You've never heard about her going to worship. You hear about Job going and sacrificing just in case his kids screwed up. Just in case his kids were getting away from God. You never hear about Miss Job gathering there praying for him. So family. She told him to curse God. Yeah, we're going to get to that part. <laughs> But, but the, oh, man, well, since Debbie's already got there, we're going. The only thing you find Miss Job saying was something negative. Why don't you just cuss God and die? But, 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 so family. So don't let your family. I hear all people talking about, well, I got family coming in, so I'm going to stay home from church. But then the very next service, will y'all pray for my lost family members? Then don't stay home from church with them. Bring them to church where they'll be under the sound of the gospel. Going to have a family reunion. We ain't going to have it Sunday morning. Don't let your family, you husbands, your wives don't want to come to church, go anyway. You wives, your husbands don't want to go to church, go anyway. Your children, your parents don't want to go to church, go anyway. You parents, your kids don't want to go to church, beat the stew out of them. <laughs> they get old enough, you bring them anyway. You know, I hope, I hope one day, if I ever get ticked off with God and I decide God ain't for me no more, I hope my children will keep worshiping God. I hope they will stay faithful to God. Because I screw up my life. Don't any of y'all have to. <laughs> exactly. I won't beat the tar out of you. What I'm going to do. But anyway. But don't let your family knock you off the wheel. Don't let the ridicule from your family, extended family, knock you off the wheel. Don't let your fear of what your family is going to say knock you off the wheel. Don't let, don't let the, the family issues knock you off the wheel. Sunday morning, you're going to have fights and arguments. Making a point to make that much more determined to go to church that day. Because that's the day that Satan's trying to keep you out of church. Those babies crying and stuff this morning, I'm so proud of you. Stay with this stuff, baby. Stay with it. Because the devil will paint your kids. The devil will drop your kid on the floor. You'll forget his bottle. You'll forget his diaper. You know, we got rags around here. You don't need a diaper. It's all right. Stick them in the sink, wash them off, wrap them up in a paper towel. They'll be all right for an hour or two. <laughs> but don't let your family knock you off the wheel. Job's family. You don't see his kids going to church with him and worshiping. You don't see Miss Job worshiping and going to sacrifice with him. But he said, the Bible said he was a righteous man, most righteous man in all of the county. He went anyway. Don't let your, don't let your family knock you off the wheel. Next one is finances. The Bible says that Job was one of the richest men in all of the land. And in one day, he lost it all. I, I see a lot of people all the time talking about, you know, I was, I was picking on Ruthie this morning about she moved to Billings and talking about gas was so high. I said, we got other people driving Billings. <laughs> you know, but I understand. But don't let you finance. Yeah. You know, I've seen people who 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 going along great. And then that finances deal can go either way. I've seen lack of finances drive us to church. And I've seen the abundance of finances drive us away from church. So you can go either way with this financial one. This is the only one I'm going to give you a choice on. <laughs> it's the finances. But don't let your lack of finances... You know... <coughs> excuse me. I served God when I was poor. 
I served God when the pets were freezing to death in the upstairs of the kids' bedrooms. I served God when we didn't have no, we opened up the cabinets and the mice were in there with help me signs. I, I served God when I was broke. Now that, now that I got some groceries in the closet, now that I got a little gas in the tank, am I going to stop serving God because God's been a little good to me? No, I hope not. I hope not. Don't let your finances or lack of finances knock you off the wheel. Knock you out of the will of God. You know, we start getting boats and we start getting a cabin in the mountain and we start getting campers and we start and so, you know, well I'm going camping this week, or I'm going I'm going going on my boat at the lake house this week, or I'm going here or there this week. You know, the good thing about Montana, we ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> it's all just wide open spaces. We got some beautiful land here, but it's just as beautiful Monday through Saturday. You know, don't let don't let your finances or lack of finances knock you off the wheel. And then your flesh. Don't let your flesh. And I'm not talking about our day-to-day -day battle with the flesh flesh. I'm talking about our health. My dad told me many years ago, well, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm, I'm ready to retire. I'm, I'm done teaching Sunday school. I'm done doing it. I said, as long as God's got breath in your body, God's got a job for you. I don't care if you're 150 years old like Miss Pat. You keep on serving God. You know, you keep going. You keep going for God. God's got, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. I was telling you a while ago, there's things that I cannot physically do like I used to do. There's things that I can't stay up and play basketball marathons all night like I used to. I can't go and, and chase teenagers around the mountains like I used to all the time. I physically cannot do it, but God's still got a job for me. I can still so far climb in and out of the sound room and get cameras up, put speakers in and all kinds of stuff. Matter of fact, any of y'all want to help with some of this stuff, you can. Um, but, but don't let our health... You know, what amazes me is we're too sick to go to church, but we can go to work. You know, we'll go to work snotting and snorting and huffing and puffing and tired and wore out, but let church time come and, oh, I got to stay home today. I got to sniffle. You know, I, I, I got... <laughs> you know, but, but, we, but we do. You know, we go to church. I mean, we're, we're, we're drop dead. You know, we just go in. We, we're running fevers. We're coughing our brains out. We can't see our computer screen. But we'll go to work. When I left the school system, I had like 100 days of sick day because I didn't take a day off when I was sick. Lord knows you don't want to waste a sick day on being sick. You want to take sick day and mental health day. But let, let church time come. And I, oh, I got a headache this evening. Man, I had such a rough day at work. I've got a headache this evening, so I'm going to stay home from church. You know, it, it's don't let our, don't let our don't let our health, our flesh, knock us off the wheel. And then then a, then a hard one is don't let your failures knock you off the wheel. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us have failed somewhere along the journey. Yeah. Don't get hung up on your failures. It's like somebody said earlier. I don't care how many times you get knocked down. Get back up again. Get back up again. You're going to fail. If you ever do anything, you're going to fail. I was telling one of the teenagers this past week. You, you show me somebody who's never messed up, and I'll show you somebody who's never done anything. Yeah. Kevin's a welding inspector. You, you show me somebody that, that has never messed up a weld, and I'll show you somebody who's never welded. You show me somebody who's never messed up an Excel spreadsheet, and I'll show you somebody who's never turned one on. You show me somebody who's missed an IV on the first try. And I'll show you somebody who's never tried to put one in. Not these. They, they get it. Oh, they get it every time? Okay. Good deal. All right. Cool. <laughs> but, but you show, don't, so don't let your failure. Yeah, you disappointed God some point in time along the journey. But he still loves you. And you disappointed him before you were ever born, according to him dying on the cross of Calvary for that. He knew what a screw up you were going to be, and he still loved you. Don't let your failures. You get up, you preach a sermon, you teach a Sunday school class, you sing a special or whatever, and you bomb. Most every sermon, I walk out of here and I ask Rose after church, how was that? <laughs> Most of the time she just says, did you preach today? <laughs> but don't let your failures. I have screwed up so many times in life, there ain't no way I should be up here according to the world standards. But God said I covered your screw-ups on Calvary. Yes. Amen. Don't let your failures knock you off the wheel. And then don't let a funeral knock you off the wheel. And I'm not talking about your own death. Job lost all of his kids. 
He lost 10 kids in the same day. And I'm sure going back up to family, he wished his three daughters and seven sons would have gone to church with him. But he kept on going. I'm sure he felt like a failure as a parent because his kids didn't go to church with him. I feel, I, I'm pretty sure he felt like a failure as a husband and a spiritual leader of his family because Miss Job didn't go to church with him, as far as we know. As far as a, a provider for his family, he lost everything he had one day. He had everything going for him. And the next time you see him, he's sitting in the fire pit scraping his boils with broken pieces of pottery. But you know how hard it is. Most of you know how hard it is to lose a loved one. I have a friend of mine, her husband died, and she said, God may not be dead, but he is to me. I've had other people tell me, you know, when their child died, it just took, took their life out of them. Don't let a funeral take you off the wheel. Don't let the death of a cat take you off the wheel. Don't let the death of a mom take you off the wheel. People die. It's part of life. People have been dying ever since the Garden of Eden. It ain't going to change until Jesus comes back. And then there ain't going to be no more death. So don't let a funeral knock you off the wheel. So don't let your family rob you of being in the will of God. Don't let your finances rob you of being in the will of God. If times get tough with your finances, give more. You just spit right in the face of the devil. Because that's what the devil told God about Job. He said the only reason he serves you is because you've been so good to him. And Job said, all this stuff came in my life to make me soft, to make me more pliable, to make me more usable. And then don't let your, I mean, most of you are getting really old. Luke. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we, face, we face physical challenges. I mean, every part of my body almost, the kids were figuring up in Sunday school one day how many surgeries I've had. I think they came out with, what, 21? 21. Yeah. And, and so, do what? No, I'm just coating the vine. Oh. <laughs> you know, she, she, how old are you? Like 25? 23. 23. I've not back to the 25 yet. Yeah, I'm got, still okay. She, she ain't even got 25 yet. She's had more surgeries than she has her year's birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but don't let that knock you off the wheel. God has a purpose for you. And every one of those scars are just places that's been healed. And you got some other places that need surgery. All of us. Need a little mental surgery once in a while. Yeah. Especially Ruthie, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? She likes me. She can't be that smart. Oh, wow. But it's... <laughs> there goes Pam rubbing her eyes again. <laughs> Why do I come here? <laughs> it's dry eye disease. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But there's, there's days when I don't physically feel like being here. But don't let that knock me off the wheel. I came in this morning with an attitude. After I got here, I was in a good mood until I got here. Because I left my attitude at home. <laughs> but, but, but things went wrong this morning. And the devil wanted that to ruin my day. And I remember preaching out under the trees on a picnic table with no sound system. I remember preaching on a bus riding down the highway. And so I said, Satan, I don't care whether we got a microphone or not. We're going to have church. I'm glad we got the microphones, and I'm glad we got the speaker, and I'm glad we got the projector, and I'm glad we got all that stuff, but that ain't going to stop us from having church. Failures. Man, if you only knew the times I felt like I failed as a pastor. Failed as a parent. Failed as a provider. Do you know how hard it is to tell your kids, I'm sorry, we can't afford this? Do you know how hard it is for you kids to say, what are we having for lunch? We don't know yet. Do you know how hard it is for your kids when you say you can have peanut butter or jelly, but we don't have both? Yeah, I feel like a failure as a parent sometimes. My kids want to know now, why am I so good at them? Because I robbed you for so stinking long. And I can't even afford to buy a sandwich loaf of bread to feed my kids with. That's hard. I had plenty to make up for it. It's hard. 
He said, don't let my past failures. Did I always say the right things to my kids? No. Did I always do right by my kids? No. And I could get wrapped up in that and I could quit the ministry and I could get out of the will of God and I could go sit on a rock somewhere down by the riverbank and suck on my thumb. But I want to be in the will of God. God says, I knew you were going to be a screw up before you ever gave you kids. But I gave them to you anyway. Because I knew at some point along the journey you tried to do the best you could. God forbid, Rose was talking about the song she wanted playing at her funeral the other night. You don't shut your face up, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it may come. No. Me or her one may die. But I don't want either one of us to quit serving because we do. Mm -hmm. I want us to keep on. <clears throat> My kids, they finally started loving me in the last six months or so. Yeah. I don't want them to quit because I die. I don't want you to quit because you lose something in your life. Maybe it's not necessarily a person. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's your favorite car. Maybe it's your favorite dog. Maybe it's your favorite gun. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can quit the gun. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but stay on the wheel. The key to not getting thrown off is staying in the middle of the wheel. The key to not getting thrown off is staying in the middle of the wheel. W-I-L-L. -L. Because as long as you're in the middle of the will of God, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Come what may. No family, no finances, no flesh, no failures, no funeral. Stay in the middle. Stay on the wheel. And then you can say like Job, the Lord has made me soft. Mm -hmm. And we can screw up being soft, and he can just make us over again. Mm -hmm. But if we ever get off the wheel, we're going to get hard. And then the slightest little thing is going to break us. Mm -hmm. I was looking for something to break, but I can't find anything. <laughs> the candy bowl. <laughs> we cannot destroy the candy bowl. We can knock the projector off the ceiling, but we can't destroy the candy bowl. The pop machine in the candy bowl has to stay. Anyway, I hope this morning that you will examine the five F's of your life and see if any of those have the possibility of knocking you off the wheel. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your mercy and your grace that keeps us on the wheel. God, we thank you so much for your loving care and your salvation that you provided to us even before we screwed up. God, we ask you to go with us when we leave this place today. Thank you for this place. Thank you for these people. Thank you for the ones that may be listening by way of the internet if I decide to post it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you all. Have a great afternoon.